2020 was supposed to be the most amazing year ever. Halloween was on a Saturday. New Year's and Christmas were on Fridays. July 4th was a Saturday. Cinco de Mayo was on Taco Tuesday. And there were two Friday the 13ths in March and November. Little did we know that life would forever change that New Year's Eve. Every year typically has a few defining moments, but 2020 contains so many world-changing, paradigm-shifting developments that it's getting hard to believe we're not in a simulation that's running every possible scenario at once. January 2020 felt like a much simpler time. All we had to worry about was whether the killing of an Iranian general in a U.S. drone strike would lead to World War III. The death of Qasem Soleimani on January 3rd led to days of terrifying tensions between the United States and Iran. With massive protests, threats of war, and Iran's retaliating attack on Iraqi bases housing U.S. troops. The first week of 2020 set the pace for what was to come next. The impeachment trial of President Donald Trump, the culmination of years of hearings, accusations, wild goose chases, and painful political acrimony began on January 16th. Speaking of years of painful political acrimony, Brexit finally happened after years of delays and more false starts than a poorly coached offensive line. Meanwhile, over 7,000 miles away in Wuhan, China, a strange new virus began to spread uncontrollably. Its presence, a silent clock counting down to the time it would bring the world to its knees. February began with 24 coronavirus cases in the U.S. and over 85,000 worldwide. Bigger YouTube prepping channels like Canadian Prepper and Full Spectrum Survival began uploading videos covering the outbreak, while for many, the word coronavirus was still unfamiliar and the threat seemed far off, but not for long. President Trump was acquitted in early February, and the political event that had hung heavy over the office in the previous six months was over in less than three weeks. But 2020 was an election year, and the political wheels would keep spinning. The first round of primary elections quickly divided the Democratic field, and major candidates began to fall. By February, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris were already out, though that would not be the last time we would hear Senator Harris's name. Andrew Yang was next. Peter Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren limped through. It soon became clear their time was about to run out. Finally, by the end of the month, the virus making its way through China started to spark fear and panic throughout the world. Images of dead bodies laying in public streets, residents being locked and sealed in apartments, massive decontamination operations soon began to flood the internet. In March, all hell would break loose. U.S. cases jumped to over 188,000. Worldwide cases approached 1 million. Under the shadow of a pandemic, hell isn't a clattering commotion of disturbance and mayhem. It's eerie silence and empty spaces. It was people dying alone in quarantined hospital beds. Global markets shuddered, sputtered, and crashed, foreshadowing months of economic suffering. As shutdowns rolled across the globe, life as we Americans knew it seemed to grind to a halt overnight. The NBA and NHL suspended play with no return in sight. Empty flights, deserted shopping centers, and cruise ships floating aimlessly through the open water. They're trapped in sometimes infected passengers, hoping and praying for a place to port. On March 11th, the World Health Organization called the coronavirus what it is and what it would be rem remain for the months and quite possibly the foreseeable future, a pandemic. Panic buying began immediately. For the first time in my 42 years, grocery store shelves were completely wiped out. Lines wrapped around the exterior of buildings as impatient shoppers filled with anxiety and panic hoped to score toilet paper and disinfectant wipes. Millions were forced to collect unemployment as businesses were forced to close as round one of the lockdowns were announced. Depression, substance abuse, crime, and suicides would skyrocket. 
As April began, the words new normal would be repeated over and over to the public. You see, normal was already long gone. Face masks became a familiar sight and social distancing became a way of life. Worldwide coronavirus cases topped 1 million. In four short weeks, there would be 1 million cases in the United States alone and more than 62,000 deaths across the globe. Bodies were being burned at Hart Island on New York City. Refrigerated trucking trailers littered public streets to store bodies until they could be dealt with. In May, rumblings of a different kind of unrest began to surface in a Georgia town of Brunswick where a black man named Ahmad Aubrey had been shot and killed while jogging in a neighborhood months prior in February. The case was reminiscent of other black men who had died at the hands of police, or in Aubrey's case, men allegedly pursuing some form of vigilante justice. One racial crisis was quickly compounded with another when George Floyd, another black man, died during an encounter with police in Minneapolis later that month. The encounter was caught on video and quickly went viral. Suddenly the floodgates opened and all hell would descend upon Democratic-controlled cities across America. City streets left barren, empty, and deserted during weeks of coronavirus lockdowns were filled night after night with thousands of protesters, looters, and rioters calling for justice, police accountability, and reform while they set cities ablaze and decimated and pillaged store shelves of already hurting local businesses. Clashes between demonstrators and police only added to the tensions, and before the month would end, it was clear a reckoning was going to come. While civil unrest dominated the news, the specter of the coronavirus still hung over the world. Some countries began slowly reopening. For the first time in five-plus months, China reported its first day without a new case. Believe that if you will. However, the reprieve was to be short-lived. By the end of May, the U.S. recorded its 100,000th death as cases approached 2 million. The protests roared into June and went global. Demonstrators filled city centers in the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Brazil, Australia, South Africa, and countless other countries uniting under one refrain, Black Lives Matter. In the United States, Talks of police reform rippled through Congress. Cities slashed police department budgets and tightened accountability. Law enforcement officers began resigning and retiring at alarming rates. The public also took change into their own hands, toppling statues of men who once championed or traded in slavery. Confederate flags and even American flags were burned in city streets. With the 2020 election mere months away, Civil unrest running rampant and a pandemic ushering in a new normal, gun sales exploded across the country. When Americans are concerned about their personal security, they buy firearms. The first six months of 2020 resulted in three million more firearms being sold than normal. The pattern highlighted an important political consequence that may result from the tumultuous period where firearms in the hands of private citizens during a time when the country was as much divided or more so than it was during the first civil war of the 1860s. I say first civil war because many expected, feared, or even hoped for a new civil war. Ten years prior, if someone would have said Civil War 2.0 is coming, they would have been laughed at and called a crazy conspiracy theorist. Flash ahead to the year 2020, and more than half the country fully expected a war. This time, it wouldn't be North versus South. It would be left versus right. Socialism versus freedom. As summer kicked off, the future seemed to hold nothing but uncertainty about the pandemic, about the November's election, and about the future of this country and the world.